Hello everybody. So today we will be uh, dealing with hydrogen bonding. Uh, so you, you must have already learned about hydrogen bonding. It's something to do with hydrogen. So, so how will you define hydrogen bonding? It's an attractive electrostatic force of attraction. That means it's an electrostatic force of attraction that binds hydrogen atom at the positive end of one molecule with an electronegative atom at the other end of the dot the negative end of the molecule is known as hydrogen bonding so that means there are two molecules involved in one molecule hydrogen is involved and in another molecule uh, electronegative atom is involved so the bonding that exists between these two molecules is known as hydrogen bonding now the hydrogen bonding it is in fact very weak bond much weaker than a covalent bond so that means what is the strength of a hydrogen bond? It is usually 10 to the 10 to 40 kilojoules per mole, while a, high, a covalent bond has a strength of 400 kilojoules per mole. Thus, hydrogen bond is much weaker than a covalent bond. Now, what is an electronegative atom? So that means any atom which has the tendency to draw electrons towards itself, that is called as electronegative. Electro electronegativity and that atom is known as electronegative atom. So here uh, we know that among all the elements in the periodic table, the fluorine it has got the highest electronegativity and followed by oxygen and then followed by nitrogen. So that means these three elements they are usually involved in hydrogen bonding. So examples of molecules exhibiting hydrogen bonding are HF so that means H HF is uh, that the bonding that is existing between HF we know is um, uh, it's a covalent bond. But if one HF molecule is binding to another HF molecule, so that type of bonding that is existing between the two molecules that is called as hydrogen bonding. So that means it has to involve a hydrogen and it also has to involve an electronegative element or atom. So that means the hydrogen bonding is designated as dotted lines. So that means this is a force of attraction between these two molecules and the atoms that are involved is at one end of the molecule is hydrogen and at another end of the molecule is fluorine. So that means the, this is a electronegative element or atom and this is a electropositive atom. So that means the, uh, since the name indicates hydrogen, so that means hydrogen has to be there and an electronegative atom has to be there. And it is designated as dotted line. That means this is not a permanent bond. So uh, other molecules are water molecules. So water is a typical example of, uh, uh, of a molecule exhibiting hydrogen bonding. So you can see that this is the bent shape of uh, water. We have uh, already discussed as per the Vesper theory that the water molecule has a bent shape or V shape. So one water molecule will exhibit hydrogen bonding with another molecule of water and so that means oxygen is electronegative element and the hydrogen. So that means the bond that is existing between oxygen and hydrogen that is designated as in dotted lines and that is known as hydrogen bonding. So uh, again another third example of a molecule exhibiting hydrogen bonding is ammonia. So ammonia we know that it is having a nitrogen atom and hydrogen atoms. So that means the hydrogen bonding will not exist within a molecule but it will exist between two similar or dissimilar molecules. So that means it can exist between two molecules of ammonia. Here you can see that nitrogen is the electronegative element and hydrogen is the electropositive uh, uh, element. And the bond that is existing between the nitrogen and the hydrogen, this bond, it tends to uh, bind two molecules of ammonia and this type of bond is attractive in nature. It's electrostatic force of attraction that is helping to bind the two molecules together and this is designated as in dotted lines that means this is not a permanent bond. So hydrogen bonding the characteristic of hydrogen bonding is that it can exist between two similar molecules or it can also exist between two dissimilar molecules that means uh, ammonia and water. So that means the, the bonding, the hydrogen bonding also exists between one molecule of ammonia and one molecule of water or it can also exist between 
one molecule of ethanol and one molecule of water. So that means the hydrogen bonding, it can exist between two similar molecules or it can exist between two dissimilar molecules. So let us see that hydrogen bonding, how it is existing in alcohols. So this is a typical alcohol. R represents the alkyl or the aryl group and the OH is the functional group in the case of alcohols. So that means the O is the electronegative uh, element and hydrogen is the electronegative, electropositive element. So that means the hydrogen of one alcoholic group will bind to the oxygen of another alcoholic group. So that means this uh, type of bonding that is known as hydrogen bonding and it is designated in as uh, dotted lines. And this type of bond is helping to bind two molecules of alcohol. Now, similarly, the uh, hydrogen bonding also exists in acids. So, this is an acid that means CH3COH. That means COOH. This is a functional group that is characteristic of all acids. So, you can, this is the, this is the formula of an acetic acid. You can write any type of acid. You can write a benzoic acid also. But the COOH is uh, the functional group in such acids. And the oxygen of one molecule that is help that is helping to bind to other hydrogen of the other acid. Similarly here, this, this is the hydrogen of this, of this molecule and it is exhibiting hydrogen bonding with the oxygen of another molecule. So that means this dotted line is representing the hydrogen bonding. Now the hydrogen bonding are of two types. One is intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Another is intermolecular hydrogen bonding. So as I have uh, mentioned in just a uh, few minutes back that hydrogen bonding can, all, can occur within one molecule. It can also uh, occur between two like molecules or between two unlike molecules. So if the hydrogen bonding is existing in a single molecule, so that means in the previous uh, uh, slides, what I have told is that hydrogen bonding will exist between two similar molecules or it can exist between two dissimilar molecules. Dissimilar molecules means one molecule of uh, ammonia and one molecule of water. So that's a typical example of dissimilar hydrogen bonding existing between two dissimilar molecules. But if the hydrogen bonding is existing within the same molecule, then that is characteristic of intramolecular hydrogen bonding. So what is intramolecular? You, here this is an example of orthonitrophenol. That means there are two functional groups in this molecule. So one is the OH group, another is the NO2 group. But the NO2 group is in the ortho position to the OH group. So that means this uh, within the same molecule, the hydrogen bonding is existing. So that means the uh, oxygen of the nitro group is uh, uh, involved in the hydrogen bonding with the hydrogen of the hydroxyl group within the same molecule. So this is one example of uh, a molecule showing intramolecular hydrogen bonding. So now let us see uh, the ortho nitro benzoic acid. That means there are two functional groups here. One is the COH group, another is the NO2 group attached ortho to each other. So that means the oxygen of the nitro group and the hydrogen of the COH group, they are involved in hydrogen bonding and this type of hydrogen bonding exists within the same molecule. Now this is also a third example which of a molecule showing uh, intramolecular hydrogen bonding. So this is orthohydroxy benzyl dehyde. So that means this is the CHO group and this is the OH group and the hydrogen of the OH group and the oxygen of the CHO group are involved in uh, hydrogen bonding. So that means here you see that orthonitrophenol. So this is one molecule that is exhibit, exhibiting intramolecular hydrogen bonding. That means the characteristic of such compounds is that the two functional groups have to be ortho to each other. So that means if the uh, uh, if the functional groups are para to each other, then uh, like the para nitrophenol or para nitro benzoic acid or para hydroxy benzyl benzyl dehyde. So such molecules will not exhibit intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Now the second type is the intermolecular hydrogen bonding. So intermolecular hydrogen bonding means that if the hydrogen bonding is uh, 
uh, existing uh, between the hydrogen atom of one molecule and a electronegative atom of another molecule of the same molecule. That means uh, like one molecule of water, another molecule of water and the, the, um, uh, the bonding that is existing between the oxygen and the hydrogen that is intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Similarly, between two molecules of ammonia and between uh, two molecules of HF. But so these are the, that that means this is uh, belonging to the similar type of hydrogen bonds, similar type of molecules. Now what about this ammonia and water? So that means these two are dissimilar molecules. So the bonding that is existing between nitrogen and hydrogen that is intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Now here you see para nitrophenol and this is another molecule of para nitrophenol. So they are that means two different molecules here are involved and this type of hydrogen bonding is intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Now what are the consequences of hydrogen bonding is uh, the, the molecules which are having uh, intermolecular hydrogen bonding they exhibit high melting and boiling points. Now this melting and boiling points they uh, are due to the a uh, strong intermolecular force of attraction attraction that is binding two molecules together similarly here you see this is the uh, 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 acetic acid two molecules of acetic acid they are associated uh, to each other to form a dimer and this is via the intermolecular hydrogen bonding and because of this the molecules they get associated so this is the second uh, consequence of hydrogen bonding now the third consequence is the solubility. So that means those molecules uh, um, which are exhibiting intermolecular hydrogen bonding with water molecules. So that means here yeah, this is the dimethyl ether or you can say ethanol molecule or acetic acid molecule. Now they are uh, undergoing hydrogen bonding with water molecules. So that means they are soluble in, in water. Whereas you see the example this thing this is what dimethyl sulfide now this will not exhibit hydrogen bonding so that means it is not soluble in water now the fourth consequence is that those molecules which undergo intermolecular hydrogen bonding there uh, the uh, the viscosity is high so that means if the viscosity is high the, the, the such molecules they are obviously means that they are undergoing intermolecular hydrogen bonding now the unique properties of water that is another consequence of hydrogen bonding now we know that water is unique in uh, several ways and its uniqueness is because of its hydrogen bonding well, one water molecule will get associated with another water molecule because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding and for this reason it is exhibiting some unique uh, characteristics first characteristic is the density of water in the solid state is less than that in the liquid state so this is unusual because in most substances density in the solid state is always more than in the liquid state and this is because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Now the second uh, uh, uniqueness of the water is that water contracts when heated between 0 to 4 degrees centigrade. This is again unusual because most substances expand when heated in all temperature ranges. Now the third uniqueness is that water is liquid over a wide temperature range that means it has got a, uh, a wide range of uh, temperature so that is 0 to 100 degrees centigrade so this this is uh, the temperature at which the water remains in the liquid state. Now the fourth uniqueness is that water is a universal solvent that means many substances many organic substances they are soluble in water because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Now the next is that Water has a high heat of evaporation. For this reason, sweating leads to cooling. Now, the next is adhesion and cohesion. Now, what, what are adhesion and cohesion? They are strong forces of attraction between the molecules that allow water to rise up inside the plants from roots to leaves. So, this is the capillary action. So, the, the next uniqueness is that water conducts heat more easily than any other liquid except mercury. So that means these unique properties of water is because of the intermolecular hydrogen bonding. So this is all about your hydrogen bonding. Hope you have understood the concepts and thanks for listening to me.